Yes, I am a gears exit. Sneak out while I'm shaving Dawson. Yes, it's a very long to your friend Ed and Neville. Mostly nothing lost. Never he wrote setting himself outward means not knowing. Said, but without love. Now I became a great actor. Theater, December 1930 by George S. Kaufman. If I live to be a hundred, and in that event the Union Central Life Insurance Company will do practically all the cheering, I shall never forget how I jumped into the cast of Once in a Lifetime and saved the day. Things were pretty desperate, I tell you that. It was already late in January, and we were due to open at the music box the following September. The part which a strange fate was to call upon me to fill, into which I was destined to leap overnight, as you might say, or over winter and summer, if you want to quibble, was as empty as a thrush. That may not be just the right simile, but the editor of this magazine has been on the phone twice a day and I'm in a hurry. Sam H. Harris, the play's producer, was at his wit's end. He generally goes out there every Friday and then doesn't come to his office again until Monday morning. Aside from 50 or 60 actors, he was at a complete loss as to how to fill the part. I remember one actor who seemed to fit the part perfectly. In fact, he would have been engaged for it if he had not suffered a rather unfortunate accident on leaving the office. He had just had an interview with Mr. Harris, who said he liked him enormously, and was starting down the stairs when he tripped over something right on the top step. It was really a funny fall. It happened that I had a good view of it because I was standing right on the top step. It was shortly after this that Mr. Harrison and Moss Hart, desperate, sought me out. Now I am aware that there are several stories abroad about this meeting, so I would like to set down here exactly what was said. My memory for things of this sort is excellent, and I am willing to swear that what they said to me was, Good God, man! Can't you jump in? That was it, exactly. Good God, man! Can't you jump in? Subsequently, even Moss Hart admitted that these were the precise words spoken, but made the absurd claim that the interview took place after I had gone into the park, and that the line was uttered upon their being informed that there was a building burning down in the next block. I am willing to leave it to any fair-minded person. Of course, it was a Herculean task. The part was a long one, and I only had until September to learn it. Many a night I sat alone in my room until the wee hours, gulping down cup after cup of strong black coffee, pounding the words into my brain, already wearied by the long grind. But I kept on, and when the opening night arrived, walked onto the stage of the music box and spoke every if, and, and, but. But if it had not been for a certain pardonable nervousness, I would have spoken some of the other words, too. The rest is history, of course, but in the interest of fair play, there are two or three points that I would like to set straight. It has been said in some quarters that I could not have been so terribly good, or else people would have taken the horses out of my carriage and hauled me to my home, the way they did with Jenny Lynn. As a matter of fact, every effort was made to do this, and the plan was defeated only because they were unable to get the right horses. It seems that the horses who do this kind of work were on another job that night. I believe some star was opening down on the east side. Although it would not surprise me if certain people deliberately arranged for the horses to be elsewhere. There is a good deal of jealousy in the theater, I found out. At the last minute, there was talk of taking the gasoline out of the taxi cab, but it was realized that that wouldn't be a good thing. Now about the bomb that came to the theater, I examined the paper closely after the explosion, and I'm willing to swear that it was not meant for me at all. It was addressed to George S. Kaufman. That's two ends, and we have always spelled our name with only one. There are some Kaufmans in Pittsburgh who spell it with two ends, and I suppose it was meant for one of them. I think one of them is named George, too, or Adrian, or something. I'm sorry, of course, about the three actors who were killed, but we had a pretty large cast, and we're thinking of letting some of them out anyway. As for the poison candy, I have a theory about that, and I'll bet you I'm right. I think it was the actor who tripped on the stairs.